I sense that you're interested in learning how to make money with your photography. I know, that's a thumbnail, so let me get started here. About a month ago, I made a video, my one year on YouTube, and I asked if anybody was interested in how I fund my channel and how I fund my travels and how I made money for the last 10 years with photography. And I got a lot of response to the question, so I'm gonna make this video because a lot of people were interested. This video is for everybody. I don't care what level you are in photography. You might learn something, you might not. It might be something you already know and you're not interested in, but it's something that's gonna help a lot of people, especially beginners and intermediates in, in photography. The big secret here is stock photography. And to my surprise, a lot of people don't even know what this is. Before I get started, this is not a get rich quick scheme. It's a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, and you don't get paid much. So I've sold pictures for 10 cents, and I've sold pictures for $250. You just don't know, it all depends on the usage and how those images are bought. Companies will buy subscription plans where they pay like 70 bucks a month and then they can buy 100 pictures a month, whatever. I don't know the details, but that when they when somebody buys a subscription then your pictures sell a lot cheaper i'm not attached to how much my images sell for if they sell for 10 cents great they are pictures i had in my computer doing nothing they're not my best images they're pictures i took to learn so why not put them up for sale i've personally been shooting stock photography for over 10 years now and i'll be honest with you i've made about hundred and fifty thousand dollars now that's 10 years that's a long time to be shooting stock for 150,000. For a lot of people, that's not a lot of money over the span of 10 years, but it's residual. And that's how I learned how to take pictures. So I'm still getting paid from pictures I took 10 years ago, which is amazing. The results are very slow, but as I said before, I'm still getting paid from images I took years and years ago. To be perfectly honest with you, since I started this YouTube channel, I haven't had any free time to dedicate to stock photography. So for over a year, I haven't submitted any new pictures to these agencies and I'm still getting paid every month. That's what I like. I work with multiple agencies, but I'm only going to share with you the ones that have performed the best for me. Uh, something like Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, Deposit Photos, uh, Alamy Stock. So there's a few that I'm going to focus and just share techniques and how I work with these agencies. The steps are simple. You take the pictures. Uh, I use Lightroom to edit. I just do basic edit. I add keywords and descriptions, that way people can find your images. Then you upload to different agencies. Sometimes you have to do different categories, it depends on the website. And then you wait, they go through a review process. If they get accepted, they're for sale immediately. If they get declined, you get a message saying why. And that's when you learn. It's a lot better to hear from a computer that your photo was rejected because your focus wasn't where it was supposed to be because it was blurry or because it's just not what they're looking for. So it's, it's great to hear from a computer. That way it's not personal. <laughs> uh, a lot of times though, and once you practice a little bit more, you, you get a little bit more confident and that computer makes mistakes or the reviewer can make mistakes. So when you know your image is perfect and they, they're telling you that it's blurry, resubmit it. Nine out of 10 times is gonna get accepted very easy to get pictures accepted as long as they're technically perfect and that's when you get to learn photography you get a free review of your images if your images are blurry then you're not going to be able to sell them unless it's a on purpose blur but this is a great way to learn and to get feedback from your images it's a very low stress uh, way to make money with photography uh, and there's just literally you work when you want to i would not recommend submitting your best content, but your B content, your setup shots, things that you were practicing and learning how to how to do these new techniques. And one of the best things about stock photography is that it's a, the easiest way to get published. I've sold pictures all over the world. This is amazing. Let me show you here on, on uh, one of my websites, Shutterstock. They give you a map of where your images are being sold. And as you can see, I, I sell pictures all over the world. It's It's amazing. And I found them in magazines, I found them on billboards, I found them on a monument in, in uh, Wyoming. To me, this is a numbers game. The more images you have online, the more potential you have to make money. And that's, it's all about potential. 
if you shoot people, you're gonna need a model release. If you shoot people that are under age, you're gonna need a parent signature. Uh, and it's fairly easy. Years ago, I had a binder and I had everybody's model release, names, addresses, phone numbers, everything else. Now you just send an email and they can fill it out online. It's, it's easy. If you shoot events or when there's a lot of people and you can't get model releases, or if you shoot brands or a car with their logo or anything that has a logo, uh, you might be able to sell that for editorial. And that changes things a little bit because now you need a different caption, a different description. And then when you go into Lightroom, let me show you this process real quick. So here's your image, this is a Huckleberry. So you wanna come up with keywords. Huckleberry, berry, mountain, wild, elevation. They only grow at high elevations. Uh, the color, purple, the plants are green or red. The color of the berry, how does it make you feel? They're seasonal, they make, uh, they make pie. They, you wanna keep, come up with as many keywords as you can based on that image. Uh, I think the websites have about 50 keyword limit, but that's what you want to think is what words are people going to use to find these images. And once you have your main keywords, you can synchronize and then you can go back into light into those other images and add keywords like hands, fingers, picking, action. It's all done in one shot. That's why I like to do multiple images of the same thing from different angles, different lenses. That's going to make it a lot easier when it comes to editing and adding these keywords. I'm going to give you a few tips for stock photography. It's a little bit different than every other genre of photography because you need negative space. So if you take an image, by the way, that's in my notebook now with my logo, which I think came out great. But anyway, when you take an image, you're gonna want negative space because editors are gonna need that to put writing or to put uh, logos or something. So think of the rule of thirds and then a corner here you might need empty like blue sky or white clouds or just something that's out of focus people are going to need that to write something that way they can sell your image with much ease because if it's too cluttered you're not going to be able to put writing and then that's just not going to be a, a picture they're going to be interested in so remember negative space is number one the other thing I do is tell a story with your images. So take up, take a close up. For let, let me show you with these huckleberries. So here's the negative space on the huckleberries. You could write anything on this side here in the corner. These images tell a complete story. That's they show you where these huckleberries are. They're up in a wood somewhere. There's dead trees, so they need sunshine. Uh, they're also showing you how they're picked by hand, one at a time. They also show you what your hands are gonna look like when you're done picking. And it also gonna show you what the end result is, like this pie. <laughs> and then you can get creative and show a little bit more that's gonna help your images sell in bundles instead of just one. You might sell all five images. So th that's gonna increase your numbers. It's also gonna help you catalog the images and put the titles in description. So when I first started shooting stuff photography, I was a, I was a full-time bartender and I would bring props home and I had a, an extra room in the house where I would set up a, a studio and that's how I learned how to set up my lights, how to set up my reflectors and at that time I was using paper to diffuse the light. I didn't have the money to buy uh, studio lights so I was making my own and I learned a lot about how to take pictures of glassware, of food and different colors and where do I put the light to isolate on black and white which by the way I made a whole tutorial about how to take drink pictures so I'm gonna put that link right here and maybe at the end of the video as well but I, I learned a lot taking pictures this way and I would go home and take 300 pictures every weekend so like a Monday Tuesday I would take 300 400 images and try to upload as many as I could and very quickly I had over 2,000 uh, drinks on a gallery online and that was amazing I've made Twenty to thirty thousand dollars just worth of drink pictures because I took the time and I learned, and now I go to different businesses, different restaurants, different bars, and I have a lot of experience. I have hours and hours of experience. Uh, I shoot for quite a few restaurants because I learned uh, how to set up the lights, how to do things, and I'm still getting paid for that. And when when I started this, I started with a uh, Canon Rebel T1i. And it's not the best camera in the world. 
It was a great camera to learn, but it wasn't amazing. So later, I graduated and I bought this one. This is the Canon 7D. And that was difficult, and I don't recommend you doing this. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor, so don't follow my steps. But I bought that camera and a lens and a credit card. And then I really quick started taking as many pictures as I, as I could with this camera and uploading into the agencies. And very quickly, those pictures started paying for the camera. They started paying the credit card. And pretty soon I was making the internet payment and then I started making a car payment. And that's when I realized there was a lot of potential behind this. And then it started making my rent payment. So I had a full-time job and this residual income was paying my rent. Stock taught me lighting, composition, uh, landscape photography, product photography, portrait photography. I learned so much doing stock photography. It's unbelievable. You can also do this with video. Someone I met at the coast, another YouTuber, his name is Adam. I'm going to put a link to his video right here. His videos are amazing. And he texted me and said, hey, why don't you sell stock videos? Which I will do that. I have submitted quite a few and I've sold a few. It just I haven't had the time yet because I'm trying to do a, a weekly video. But I'm going to put uh, Adam's link right here. He's Go watch him. Subscribe if you can. Uh, this YouTube community is small, but it's growing, especially mine. I have a lot more friends. I'm meeting a lot more people, and everybody's getting in touch with each other, trying to help each other out. So this is amazing. Bambi's feeling left out. So let me, let me uh, just leave it here. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you learned a little bit more. And if you're interested in, in uh, stock photography, I'm going to put a couple of links down below. Be sure to use those links to sign up because uh, I think they give me like a cent every time you sell a picture. But hey, why not? <laughs> if, if you like the video, don't forget to click the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't. And we'll see you next time. Bye.